loves us more than we will ever know. There is nothing we can do that will stop His love and His pursuit of us. And so if you're feeling weighed down and uh, just burdened by what's going on, you should be at home here because we're all feeling a little bit like that in some area of our life. The most powerful part of the song is the, the word again. We can run to the Father again and again. a few moments or for the rest of the time or however long that's going to be unless God just makes you jump up because you're so excited I want to turn this thing around because but it's bothering me so I may just turn this thing right off you guys get distracted by things easy or is it just me it's just me all right that's fine I can say it's not thank you Mike got my, got my back there 
So let's pray. Uh, I've the last few weeks, I guess, just with everything ha- happening, I've not said, "Hey, we've got offering coming up" or whatever, you know, because we kind of got out of the habit of that because you know it hasn't been for you guys to be here and we're not passing the plate. So, but I want to make sure you guys know, hey, we still have it right there. If you still want to give without doing the online stuff, which completely cool. It's fine if you don't want to. That's why we have that box back here for you to drop it into if you'd like. Um, I want to tell you, go on record and say Chapel Grace has been amazing through this entire thing. Uh, The support, I've talked to many other pastors, they've lost like 50% of their income. Chapel Grace has not dropped at all, you guys. Not not one iota. Yeah, praise God. Um, As a matter of fact, we're doing a little bit better than we were before because you guys are amazing and you understand that the needs were bigger than they were before even because we've had to do different things that we didn't do before, whether it be video and um, happy Father's Day to all you guys watching and they're all saying stuff and I can't do that stuff. I'm not good like that. So that's just a good to everybody. So can I pray for you? I'm going to pray for our offering, pray for our service. Then we've got a really cool video to show you. uh, Just something fun to lighten the times up here. So let's pray together. So, Father, I just thank you for this chance to be together. I thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to share your word. And, Father, it's such a huge responsibility to preach what you tell me to preach, God, but it always comes from you, and it's always what you've asked us to do. And so today is a day that we celebrate fathers and dads and father-in-laws and, and stepfathers and fathers Father, just all kinds of different forms of fathers, whether they're an actual father or a birth father or adoptive father. And so, God, we just thank you for those men that you've placed in our lives that we can look up to and look to for an example and lead us in certain ways. And so thank you for that. Pray for those who uh, have lost their father or that person that they look to like I did a long time ago. And it's a it's a tough day for us. And so we think of our our father and uh, it's good memories, though. And we miss them terribly. And so I just pray for each and every one like that. And Lord, I just pray for the message this morning. Uh, I pray for the offering that we're receiving. Uh, and Lord, thank you, God. Thank you for being faithful to us. Our, our faith lies in you and in nothing else. And so because of that, God, we know we're going to be just fine. And so thank you for this morning. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't say it enough. May you bless us and take care of us. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. And everyone says, Amen. go ahead and watch this video and then we'll jump right into it. I think it worked before, but just like everything else, technology is fantastic when it works. And when it doesn't, it's the worst thing in the world. She says, oh, well, I say it's the worst thing in the world. I love her optimism more than mine. Thank you, Kathy. Glass up. Oh, it's working.
bell with anybody like fit you at all yeah I like it anyway so how are you guys today how's life treating you can you turn me down a little bit Mike I think I'm kind of ringing a little bit um so today is obviously Father's Day if you got if your dads came in and you didn't get your gift let me pull my handy dandy pocket knife no it's not a pocket knife sorry y'all didn't you're not that cool anyway we are that cool I mean I didn't Gosh, don't say things if you don't want to say them, right? My dad says not to say things and they're not nice. Anyway, we have, uh, we have these cool compasses for the dads that are actually pretty nice and they're keychains so you can always find your way unless you're like most men and you don't want to even use this and you're like you're going to find your way no matter what. You don't need a compass or anything else. Compass, right? Because we had that argument earlier. Who did I have that argument? I don't remember. Oh, a protractor. Who all calls a protractor a compass? Do you guys even know what a protractor is? Yeah, thank you. All right. So anyway, off, off topic, it's, that's me for, for sure. So you get a compass and a candy bar back there. Even if you uh, don't want the candy bar, take it and give it to somebody else that you want to. Uh, and if you know a father, we've got plenty of these that you want to give one to. Take an extra one if you'd like. Okay? So that's what's going on with those things. And they're out back there. We'll have somebody handing them out, right, as you're leaving. Kelly's going to do that. Uh, did everybody get one? Did you guys miss them when you walked in? Let me throw it at you. I'm going to throw it at you. That would hurt. What's that? You guys got your gift a couple weeks, months ago, a month ago. You don't get nothing else. You all think you're special or something? Moms are like, whatever. Come on. Yeah, they are. If you want one, I'm sure we have plenty of compasses for you. If you lose your way, Verna, I doubt it, but Verna knows how to tell me to go everywhere and get there really quickly. Anyway, <clears throat> that, not in a bad way. So um, Father's Day. Before I get too much further along, let me just jump into what I was going to get into. It's one of those days that... For me, just like Mother's Day, it's, it, there's people that don't have their moms and their dads in their life anymore, or they never had a mom or a dad, right? And so I've had many people go, well, that's kind of whatever. I will say I had a father figure, even though I had a physical birth dad that was there with me all the time, I had a father figure who took me under his wing, so to speak, and if it wasn't for him, I would have never made it through high school. He's a teacher, and uh, he just took a special interest in me and saw me for who I was and who I could be and what I would become and because I was going the wrong way. Anybody else like that either? I was heading the wrong way and this guy grabbed a hold of me, uh, Mr. Jim Oates, was actually at my wedding and everything else. Fantastic guy. And if it wasn't for him, Lord have mercy, I don't know. But God is ultimate, God is, God is sovereign, so he knew what he was doing, so he put the right people in our place. He puts the right people in our paths when we need it. And that's what happened for me. And I'm sure it, if it hasn't happened for you yet, God's got that person that, to lead you wherever you need to go. Uh, ultimately, he is the one to lead, be following. So, you know, today is one of those days, too, that uh, Mother's Day, I really thought we were going to be open on Mother's Day. I really did. I thought, oh, there's no way we're going to be closed. Mother's Day is one of those days that this place, obviously, this is COVID-19 stuff, but uh, this place is like packed on Mother's Day. Have you ever seen that? And you guys remember last year? It was packed, right? And then Father's Day, all the dads are like, oh, we're going to the beach. And it's like, there's nobody, you know, not all of them, but it's kind of like, you're laughing because you know it's true. It's observably true. We see that every year uh, inside of uh, Father's Day. It's not always the case with every dad. Uh, for me, the beginning of my life, my dad it wasn't important enough to come. to. We didn't really go to church anyway. So he would send me to church on Father's Day, but he wouldn't go. So kind of weird. But that's what he did because he saw the, he, I guess I can say it like this. At least he saw the importance of church in my life as a young person. And he tried. That's what he saw it as. And he said, I'm going to make sure they, they go to, that the kids go to church. And then when I was old enough to choose, what do you think I chose? Right? I didn't choose that. I chose the fishing because my dad went fishing. He dropped me off and go fishing. So I was like, I'm going fishing. But then much later in life, you know, as, I, as things changed, um, you know, I realized the importance of after being a dad, becoming a dad. And I realized the importance of leading my family and being there for my family. That is, after I realized that I was locked into some things I shouldn't have been, alcoholism or whatever. But when God grabbed a hold of me, it was, it, things changed. And it was no longer, hey, look, Kelly's saying, we should go to church. It was me dragging them out of house. Let's get out. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Why aren't you up? Why aren't you awake? Let's get going, whatever. And because I, I just saw the importance of it. And so 
dads, we have a, an opportunity to, to lead our families in a, in a good way. We're going to talk about that some more here in a little bit. But so what does it mean for us, though, for everybody? This isn't just a dad thing. We don't just follow the way as a dad. All people should be following the way, the way being Jesus. Um, can we, is that on behind me? Or can you put the uh, slideshow? Did it come up? I, I forgot to grab my clicker, so I'm going to need you guys. Happy Father's Day, by the way, in case you didn't. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Go to, can you go to the next one? I'm going to have to ask you to do it. So we're going to be talking about Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. What better place to turn to than that? Dads, we should be leading our families in that way. Jared's going to be talking about that, so you get to hear from Jared finally, right? They're like, finally, Jared. But uh, So we have several verses up there. But we're gonna, I wanted to start out with this morning talking about following and finding the way, God's way. What does that mean? What does it mean to find the way? Who is the way? How is the way? All of those things. Well, obviously, we, there's places that we need to turn to. And the only place we can find what God wants us to do really, truly, is the Word of God, is the Bible. Um, the Bible is the place that will lead us the, in the first place for me. I couldn't get enough of it when I first received Jesus. I still can't get enough of it. And even every time I open it up, I'm surprised, uh, truly surprised by what God shares with me. So one of the first things we need to talk about is following the directions. So God has given us the directions to what to do, right? And um, even, I think it was even recently, Kelly, what were we putting together? We're putting something together and she's like, maybe we should read the directions. I'm like, I don't need directions. It's pretty self for you know, right there. And, and lo and behold, I missed something and it didn't go together right. So we had to change it. I don't remember what it was. It wasn't the desk that was easy. It was something else. So I had to take it back apart and try over again because it didn't work. So directions are only good if you use them, right? And they're there. They're usually out there. They're usually written. Almost everything that's sent to you, whether it's good or bad, some are bad directions. God's word is very good directions. So Psalm, there's plenty of places you can turn to in the Bible. Psalm 119 uh, talks about that. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Who's heard that before? Obviously, that meaning that it's a it's the guiding place. It's what guides you to what you need to be, where you need to be going, and how you need to be going, and all of those things. Uh, There's also Psalm 32, 8, and 9, which says God uh, is going to be. He's going to lead you and be instantly with you all the time when you ask Him. Uh, He's going to be there for you and guiding you. And there's there's plenty of other places that I could turn to uh, that talk about the importance of the Bible, the importance of God's word. So knowing that, understanding, I don't think anybody in here would debate that, the, that God's word is, not, is important or not, right? It's very important. I don't think you'd be here seriously. Looking at all of you, there's no way you'd be here even if you didn't think it was true. So obviously, I think most of you understand that. But do we get it to where the point to, the point behind this is, so why is it important as far as finding the way? Well, first of all, knowing the way through the Bible is the exact place that we need to turn to to know the way. So John, I'm oh, sorry, 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize, I'm reading the NLT, and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we're wrong and teaches us to do what is right. So obviously, you have the other ones where it says it's good for protection, for guidance and reproof. And yeah, I get, I, I have three different versions memorized in my brain, so I get it all mixed up, so... But the point is, the scripture was inspired by God. It wasn't something that men came up with. It wasn't a man-devised manual of instructions of how to do it. There's some very good instructions, but God used men to write it down for us, correct? You guys get that? That's what it means by inspired. It wasn't, they weren't possessed by God or by some mystical force to just all of a sudden start writing and close their eyes, right? It was more or less, it was not more, it was they, God inspired them to write the words that they wrote. And it was God led. And so, but God used the people and their, and their personalities in the way he, to write the, the, the different books of the Bible. Uh, no different than if you look at the different characters throughout the Bible that I've read, written. You have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the first four Gospels. And all of them were different kinds of people with different kinds of, the way they wrote it were differently, were different. Matthew is probably one that's very, most people are like, man, that's a hard one to get through. Because it was written mostly for Jewish people to understand the genealogies of what was happening. So when you read it and you understand it, it's more written towards somebody who is a, of Jewish faith. And then there were other ones that were written directly more for Gentiles, those who uh, Gentiles, those who are not Jewish. And so those are important to understand. But so we see this and he says, but you, Timothy, Timothy is a young man that was under Paul's charge. He's speaking to Timothy here in second Timothy and instructing him in about how, you know, he's, he's a pastor of a church or he's you know, taking care of a church and, and, 
He's teaching them about the importance. And so obviously the Bible is of, a, of the most importance to be able to teach and go along. And obviously they're writing it here. This is being written as they're speaking it, right? And so they, had, they don't have the benefit like we do, but we get the words that they said. So scripture is extremely important. So following it and knowing it, it teaches you when you're doing wrong. You want to know what's right from wrong, read the Bible. It's pretty clear. This is right. This isn't right. Um, that's where many laws have been written and they came from. The Bible was, uh, a lot of laws have been based from the Bible. Uh, you've heard of the golden rule, right? Who's ever heard of the golden rule, right? It, that came from the Bible. It's to treat others and, and, and all of those things and depends on who you talk to. I guess the golden rule could be different, but generally speaking, all of these things we hear about are biblical principles. They've just been translated through to maybe sayings that we didn't realize were even quoting the Bible through some of this stuff. And so the Bible is extremely important. So as we go through it and we find it and we see these things and we understand that it's inspired by God, it's useful for us to be taught about how to live and what to do uh, without a doubt. You can't find the way to go without the instruction manual, which is right here in front of us. And so this is also, it helps us realize what's wrong. It helps us to correct, be corrected when we find out what's wrong and how can we make this right? What do we do here? Now, and all of that goes, I hopefully a lot of you guys go that way. That, but the important, important part of this, whether you're a dad or not, is that the Bible is the way to know the way. And then it helps us to resist, resist the urge to go our own way. I don't think this is just a male thing. I think this is a human thing. And so many people have an urge to just do it their way. I'm not going to do it any other way. I don't care what anything says. I don't care what the Bible says. I'm going to do it my way and I'm going to find my way to heaven or my way to make things right or my way, my way, my way. And uh, I think that comes back to the directions thing again, doesn't it, Kel? Like, don't you think we should like, now we have GPS so we really don't have an excuse, right? So, but when you had maps or you go in some place, it's the same idea of going the way we want to go. And we find that out in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, where it says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that out of yourselves it's a gift of God, not of works, so that we can't boast. God gives us a way to go about things, and our own works aren't the way to go about it. Because if we could do it, if we could bridge our gap between us and God, and we'll talk about that some more here in a minute. I'm hoping that Jared will kind of fill in some of these blanks for me. Because uh, God is the way to go. Jesus is the way. Uh, if, if we want to find our own way, we can't do it. If we could do it our own way, we would brag about it all day long and how much better I am than you are. Mandy, I'm so much better than you because I know the way and you don't, right? Can you see how, how, how even we can become pompous like that anyway, as it is, even if we think we're more right about the Bible. So we need to be careful about going our way. It's not okay to go our way. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 is my life first. Does anybody else have a life first that Maybe God spoke to them a long time ago and that they just kind of like, it was like a revelating thing to them. I was like, whoa. But it says, I'm going to read it to you because every time I say it, I mess it up, even though it's my life verse. Maybe it's just because you guys are staring back at me and you make me nervous. I don't know which one it is. That's not true, but oh yeah, it is actually sometimes. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not under, lean not under your own understanding. Verse five, three, five says that. And it says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And so how do we acknowledge God? How do we find God's way? What, do you think you can just kind of mis mis oh, whatever the word I'm trying to say? Do you think you can just kind of pull it out of the air and figure out what God's way is? God has written it down for us to find his way. So that's why if I haven't beaten in your head enough now, the Bible is extremely important in the way that we can find where we need to go and how we need to go about that. So let me finish out with the last part here. So what is this way I'm talking about? What, what can I possibly be talking about when it talks about going God's way or, or resisting theirs to go our way? God has a specific way for us to go to get back to him. And I want to make sure, Jared, you can start getting ready and come up here in just a second. I'm just going to finish with this part because I'm going to have Jared share about how he feels leading his way, Jesus as being the way to his family. Uh, and he'll share that in just a moment. But going God's way, John chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, and this is one that I'm not going to go rogue on. I'm going to read it to you because this is one that we need to understand. This is the place that you need to turn to. If someone says Jesus is not God or whatever, turn right to John chapter 1. If you haven't already heard me say that a hundred times, you'll hear me say it a thousand and one more times after this because Jesus is the way. John chapter 14 verse 6 says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Why? Because he's God. It says, in the beginning, verse 1 says, in the beginning was the word. This says, in the beginning, the word already existed. 
Maybe that's a good way to put it, too. It existed. It was already there. The word is capitalized here, W, meaning Jesus. It says the word was with God and the word was God. So not only, so if you just stopped with the word and said the word was with God, then you could stop and say, well, he was with God, but that doesn't make him God, right? But it goes on and God makes sure to be very clear to say the word was God. He existed in the beginning with God and God created everything through him and nothing was created except through him. Nothing was created without him, as another version might say. Jesus was highly involved in creation. So if Jesus was involved in creation, who created everything? Oh my gracious, who said that? Say it really loud so at least like, God. God created everything, did he not? I think most people, reasonable people will say that. God is the creator. And this says that nothing was created except through him being the word. We find out later that the word is Jesus. The word gave life to everything that was created and his life brought light to everyone. So remember, John's writing this after the fact, after Jesus has already died, buried, and and rose from the dead. So he's writing this right here very clear to make sure that everyone out there and everyone that hears this in the future, which is what you guys are listening to right now, understanding that Jesus is the word. Jesus is God. Jesus is the way. Nothing was made without Jesus. Do you guys get it enough? Have I said it enough? So start saying amen or I'll keep saying it. Y'all going to be here till three o'clock this afternoon. If you want to go to dinner, say amen or say okay. So the light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. So God himself came in the flesh in the form of Jesus and was always there. That's why he's God. He was always there. The only person and the only way that we could be saved, the only way that we could be made right with our, be right, be made right because of our sin is that a holy, righteous person, sinless person would die for us. And that's why Jesus could do it, because Jesus was sinless and he was God. So I want Jared to come up and share. I asked him because uh, I want him. He's got some awesome young ladies in his family and uh, and he's leading him in a certain way. And I want him to share about why the importance of why he thinks it's important that he leads his family in the way. All right. You ready right. to take it on? It's weird looking in there. I'm just going to warn you ahead of time. OK. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, Joshua 24, 15 says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It's a decision that I have made for my family as the father of the home, the leader in the home. And the beginning of that verse is you can choose which way you're, who you're going to serve, but I'm going to serve the Lord. And if you guys know, uh, fathers in the room, fathers. Fathers, you guys know quickly as a father um, how much you feel like you're not enough or you don't know what to say or do in every situation, right? There's a lot of those times like, wow, I I really don't know what to do here. I don't know how to respond to that. And um, I've realized uh, as a dad, my girls are up in the balcony, that that I'm I'm not enough. I'm, I'm not wise enough, I'm not good enough, I'm not loving enough, but, um, but I know someone who is. And so if you guys want, uh, open your Bibles to Ephesians 3, 20 through 21, and I'm going to kind of let that verse guide the rest of what I have to say with us this morning. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 to 21. So I am, I'm married, I've been married for 10 years, and I've got three daughters. Uh, one is seven, one is six, and yeah? Seven, six, and four. Seven, six, and four. I was gonna say seven, six, five, but it's not that. And uh, okay, so Ephesians 3, 20 through 21, let's pray really quick. So God, we're gonna read your word. We've already been meditating on your word, hearing it, and... Uh, I don't want this to be, we don't, Pastor Bruce and I don't want this to be our time, you guys hearing our wisdom, our words, it's, it's your words, Lord, that are powerful, living and active, that can, that can change our hearts, that can empower us to be more than we can be on our own, in our own strength. So we just pray a blessing over everyone in this room, Lord, wherever they're at, um, pray for all the dads, 
all the fathers and fathers to be, Lord, that we would hear from you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, so Ephesians 3, 20 to 21 says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work in us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. So, you know, talking about not being enough. I'm just not enough. My girls need more. They need more patience. They need more love. Um, I keep, you know, I'm not perfect. And, uh, but the first part is Jesus is able. To him who is able, that's that first part of that verse. And Jesus is enough. And the, one of the hardest things about deciding what we're going to say this morning was that there's so many different lives and family, unique situations that you guys have going on out there. We've got people who are, uh, we got blended families. We've got people who are single, married, widowed, divorced. Um, some of you are with your kids all the time. Some of you only get to be with your kids a little bit of the time. And we've got uh, grandfathers. We've got uh, dads who can't wait to be grandfathers. And we've got dads who can wait to be grandfathers, right? And uh, fathers of adults, fathers of young children, new fathers, future fathers. And then you just got your specific home life and your kids that are so unique. And so we need to know that Jesus knows what you, what you need. He knows what's going on. He knows how you, the type of father that you want to be for your kids. And uh, he's able to do immeasurably more than all that we can ask or imagine. Think of that, that your dreams and what you would imagine for your family and your kids' lives. God can do immeasurably more than, than that vision or dream that you have for your family. And how? Because it's not on your power. If it was on your power, guys, we cap out really quick. But it's not on our power because we're not enough. But in this verse, the second part is according to his power that is at work in us. So I can be enough for my kids because Jesus makes me enough for my kids. When I tap out and I'm rising up in anger or when I'm not patient and I don't have the words to say, I can reach out and I can pray and ask God for wisdom and ask him for patience. And because of his spirit living in living in me, then I can have the ability that I don't have on my own strength. And it's all for his glory. We don't want our kids to be singing the praises of us, right? We want our kids to be praising the Lord. We want our kids to be looking to him because we can't be everywhere at once. I mean, I've learned, I mean, our kids are a living timeline, right? My daughter just lost her first two front teeth. Okay, um, my middle daughter just turned six and my youngest just turned four. And you're literally watching their face just grow up right there. And then I know people who keep telling me, just wait, man, in a blink of an eye, they're gonna be graduating from high school, maybe even earlier than you imagined, right? And they're gone and they're out, out of your direct hands. There is nothing more powerful than the influence you can make with your family, with your children. And that's a little intimidating, right? That, that what we do, the time we spend, what we say, how we teach them is m literally molding and making a life. It's not just about teaching them how to have the good behavior. It's about teaching them how to be leaders. It's about teaching them how to lead their own families someday. And uh, the last part, I've got we possibly might be running out of battery power. Is it it's done? Shoot. See, you know, our, our power runs out really fast. But God's power is limitless. It never runs out. We don't have to, he doesn't have to charge. He doesn't have to recharge. You know, we do. We do. He's our life source. And so the last part is just, aren't our kids gifts? Our kids are gifts. Whether you believe it's a gift from God or you just believe it's just an amazing miracle of biology, we know 
that our kids are precious. They're gifts, they're valuable, they're beautiful, they're unique, specific to just each one of them. You can't treat every single kid the same. Every single one of them is different and what God's plans are for them are all different too. I, uh, there's a, a curriculum that I use occasionally and it's orange curriculum and they have one that's called, uh, it's just a phase, don't miss, so don't miss it. Not like it's just a phase, they'll get through this you know, terrible twos or whatever attitude they're going through, or this, the teen years, it's just a phase, they're gonna get through it. So no, it, it's just a phase, so don't miss it. Because every phase is important. And uh, you guys, God chose you to be dad. He didn't choose anyone else. He chose you to be their father. And he chose them to be your children. I literally believe that, like, I mean, to the day, like, your kids are your kids because of just perfect timing by God. If the timing had changed in any way, you'd have a different child there. God gave you your kids and you are their dad, which means if God, and that should give you confidence because if God has chosen you to be their dad and he knows them inside and out completely, then, then he's gonna give you what you need if you turn to him. Father, he, this is your daughter. This is your son. You've placed him or her in my life. You have plans for them and you've chosen me to be their father. Please help me be the father you created me to be. And I don't think that you will be disappointed. God will do immeasurably more than all you can ask or imagine if you ask and you do imagine those things, have visions and dreams for your family. And then the last thing is, the last part is, and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever, God is about generational blessing. He is looking beyond your kids right now. He's looking to your kids' kids, and he's looking to your kids' kids' kids. He is looking to bless you and your family and their family and families after that. And God is all about generations, and that is powerful throughout all generation, forever and ever, amen. Um, I'm living in a generation blessing of faith. Um, some of you are the start of that faith blessing in your family. I, my great-great-grandfather was a godly man who, who passed that faith on to his grandfather, who passed that on to my grandma, Grandma Betty, passed that on to my mom, who passed that on to me, who I'm now passing that on to my my children, whom I hope will pass that on to their children. And it's not just be good, godly kids, go to church and do the right things. It's no, um, it's giving your life to Jesus and serving him and raising your family and blessing your family and blessing those all around that your kids been uniquely made for the, the works and the, and the things that God has created for them to do in the lives that he's created for them to impact. And just, uh, so lastly, just kind of going along with the, the ooh. <laughs> going along with the metaphor of the compass, this is, this is what I have chosen to guide my life. Um, it has, it is true, you know, the Bible says it's true, it's sure, it restores your soul, okay? It, uh, it's a, it's a light in the path when you don't know which step to take. It's your wisdom. It should be like counselors that you go to when you don't know what to do. And God is unchanging. He never changes. You know, uh, I've been reading in, in Genesis and uh, man, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, I, you know, I keep going, God, why? Why did you choose these guys? Like, why haven't you um, abandoned them? Because they're, they're not trusting you. You know, they... You know, and, uh, but God has committed to them. He's called them and he's chosen them to be the father of many nations that will bless. And so, you guys, God has called you to be a father of many nations, to be a fa father of many generations and to lead them in your faith that you have. So let this, let the words 
of God. Let them be your guide because they will not disappoint. So, hey, I'm not touching that thing. It's gross. <laughs> so, we had a, a Bible study that we used to do in New Hampshire called Qu Quiverful. I may have told you about it before. We had uh, we have four children. We were the we had the least amount of children in our entire small group. Everybody else had at least six and above, and so the kids outnumbered all the adults when we would do Bible study and. Which was okay with us because, you know, because there were so many, there was older ones and younger ones. They would take care of each other and run from the dog that chased them and tried to bite them and all that stuff. And it was great. But we chose that because the word quiverful, it says that your children are a heritage for you, given to you. Our children are a heritage and they're a heritage and they're, they're laid upon us as moms and dads, as parents to raise our children and raise them up in the way that God would have us raise them. And they're our responsibility and, uh, and it's not something that we're not, we're supposed to take lightly, period, at all. And by, and God told us in his word, he said, listen, O Israel, in Deuteronomy chapter six, listen, Israel, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your, and all your strength. And you must commit yourself wholeheartedly to these commands that I'm giving you today. And he says, repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you're at home and when you're on the road and when you're going to bed and when you're getting up. Tie them around your neck. Bind them on your head. You must wear them as reminders. The point is this. Remind, we're supposed to be reminding our children how good and how great and how big God is and how much we're supposed to love God and how much we're supposed to follow God. And I thought Jared's words were so perfect and exactly what we needed to hear at such a time as this. Fathers. Fathers, this is our responsibility. And if you, if you don't have a father, moms, it's your responsibility. I'm looking at you right now. But you have other men that have come into your life, right, Shelly? You've had other men that have come along and helped you. And, uh, but the point is this. It's our responsibility to raise our children. And remember, I, I can't remember the exact place where it was, but it says if we raise our children up, if we teach them, and when they're old, they won't depart from it. We need to remember that the things that we teach in our children and instill in our children should st will stay there, remain there. They may go stray. They may stray. They may go somewhere. They may become that, that child that we're worried about. But if we've taught them the word of God and we've been faithful to the word of God and taught them who Jesus is and taught them how to live the life, no matter what happens, if they go astray, if something happens, and, and it, they're going to come back to it. Some of you might think, what does it mean to be astray? You know what that means. It means you go this way or that way and you leave God one side or the other, but they always come back. And the other, the other caution is your kids aren't you. Remember that. The one thing uh, about my children, not the one, there's so many cool things about my kids. My kids are amazing. You know, I'm going to tell my kids right now because they are. They're not just because they're sitting right there and two others are, uh, I don't, uh, Kyle's probably sleeping. I don't know what he's doing. Anyway, um, so I just said he's amazing. He's sleeping, right? He is probably watching me right now saying, Dad, stop. Um, but they're amazing. But they're not me. But they're not me. Your kids aren't you. You're supposed to raise your children and help them to know who they are so they can become the person God wants them to be. They're not you. Don't live your life vicariously through your kids. Let them become who God has brought them to be. That wasn't even part of my message. Can you go to the last part? It just got, you just really inspired me, Jared, with, your, with the words you spoke today. Thank you. Keep going. That was supposed to be up there for Jared. So choosing the way. We're just going to stop right there for a minute, and then I'm going to close. I promise. Have you figured out that we're talking about the way is Jesus? By now, come right back. Sorry about that, guys. Have you figured out that the way is Jesus? Amen. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. That's what John 14, 6 says. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's what Jesus says. Because Jesus is God. And so we're supposed to be leading people that way. Not just our children. Hopefully you're leading your children. It starts there. I can't tell you how happy I was when I heard my children say, Dad, we want to receive Jesus. And they just prayed. They just did it. Yes, they were raised in church, but they did it. I didn't have to tell them. I, they did it in all different places. Some were in church. One was in the car somewhere. I don't remember. All the different things that we do when we get talking but, I, but they all, all four of them have received Jesus as Lord and Savior. And that's not to my credit. That's to God's faithfulness and that we're teaching through his word and sharing his word. 
But the one thing is, for me as a dad, the right choice was always Jesus. And choosing Jesus, to, choosing Jesus always leads to life change. It did for me, and it will for you. If it hasn't already, it will. It always leads to life change. My life is completely different. However, I'm not you and you're not me, so that life change is different for all of us. But it all leads us to the one true God. And so God... You see this, you've seen the gospel. I'm going to probably push this in your brain as much as I can. When I did it, when I did youth ministry, I did it there. I'm going to do it with you and anybody else I can talk to. And it's so simple to remember the gospel, G-O-S-P-E-L, God created us to be with him. He really did create each and every one of us to be with him. He didn't create us to be apart from him. That wasn't his plan ever. Did he know it was going to happen? Obviously, so that's why he devised a plan to fix it so we could be with him again. And then our sins, the problem is we always like to say God went somewhere, God did, God did that. And it's the sin that came into the world that caused the creation that created, I'm sorry, that created the problem that we're separated from God. You know, this is all coming, you have the Old Testament, God created to be with him in the very beginning, Genesis chapter one and two, right? Then from the middle of two on through the end is where we find out there are sin separates from God in the very beginning of Genesis because no longer could we be with God because Adam and Eve decided they wanted what they wanted and they took it. Right. And then they sin and that caused sin to come across humanity and it separated all of us from God, not just them. All of us became you talk about a generational thing, Jared, that became a generational thing for everybody. We all inherited that. And then since this is the thing I was trying to get to with everybody, sins can't be removed. You can't do it. Dads, moms, kids, if you're in here, you guys, did you get your coloring books, by the way? I guess sidetracked, sorry. He's looking right at me. That rarely happens. Anyway, sins cannot be removed by good deeds. We can't do anything. We try and do it our own way. We try and fix it our way. Uh, and it's, that's why I was trying to say it's not just a male thing. Human beings try to do things their own way. I'm not going to let somebody tell me what to do. I'm not going to let God tell me how I'm supposed to live. So I'm going to do it my way. And then we find out it's not my way or the highway. It's my way or his highway. They're, you know, they go separate ways. One leads one way, one leads the other. And then Jesus paid for that price, though, because we can't do it. We can't pay for it. Jesus did. Jesus did. He paid that price. He paid the price for our sin on the cross. On that cross, his blood was shed. We just did communion last week. And we talked about the reason we do communion is to remind us of what it took for Jesus, for us, for our sin to be paid for. It was a high price, a high price, but we didn't have to pay it. He did. And then because he paid that price, everyone who trusts in Jesus alone, nothing else, has eternal life. Trust in Jesus alone. And then life begins with Jesus the moment you receive him, not the moment you go to heaven, the moment you receive him. Life begins with Jesus right then and lasts forever. And so that's something that we want to lead our children to, but we shouldn't just want it to just be with our kids. Can you just go to the last slide? It should be for all people. Have you chosen the way? I'm going to ask all of you here. You can either raise your hand or not, but I'm proud to raise my hand. I have chosen the way. And I, I'm, not, I'm not embarrassed to say it. I'm going to say it as much as I can. Now, I'm not perfect. I still make plenty of mistakes. And thank the Lord that he died for me so I could make those mistakes and still receive forgiveness every second of every day. But have you told others about the way? If you've received it, have you told others? Or are you telling others? And you guys can start coming up for the final song. And what was your life? This is one I haven't asked for a while. I want you to think, if you've received Christ as Lord and Savior, what was it like? Do you remember what it was like before Jesus? Tony, can I call, call you out for a second? Do you remember what your life was, out with, what your life was what, like without Jesus? Tony Valencia, my good friend, he said, yes, because I know I can ask him that because that's a big life change. He's got a marker in his life he can look to and go, life completely changed the moment I received him. He changed me. Sometimes it took a little longer for me. It took a while. I heard about him and then it took me a while. And Tony, where he worked on you, I got, I got to watch him work on you. It was, it's and still working on you and me, right? It's amazing. But what was your life like without Jesus? Do you remember that? Does anybody remember that? Don't take this the wrong way, but I'm going to say it. Was it hell? For real, that's not a cuss word. That's a real destination. That's a real place. So let's say, you know, I know people use it in a swear word kind of way. That's not what I was doing. Because it was leading me that way too. Without Jesus, that's where I was lead, being led to. 
and it was miserable. But the moment I received Christ as Lord and Savior, for real, not, not the time I was being a player. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good way to use it, but uh, I was faking. I heard the words, and I wanted, I wanted Kelly to be happy for me, and I wanted all these people. But it wasn't until I truly received Jesus that my life changed. So I prayed a prayer, but my life truly changed the minute Jesus said, and I heard, and I listened, and I obeyed. And I obeyed. So the, the thing is this. If you remember what it was like before Jesus, and you know what it's like after Jesus, do you want your friends and neighbors to have that feeling too? That's what we should be doing. Not just as leading our family, we should be leading our kids to do that too. Teaching our children and training them up in the way so they can tell others about the way. It's the most important thing in our life. It's our mission, it's our message, it's all that we are. It's what we have to hang on to. And the moment the government says not to do that, we're gonna say, government, you can stick it because we're gonna keep telling everybody about Jesus. And I'll go to jail for it. That's the point. And Paul did. So I wanna encourage you, I wanna pray with you. We're gonna get, what we can sing, I forgot already. The blessing. Oh, that's, I for, how could I forget that song? It's a great song, The Blessing. So I'd like you to bow your heads and close your eyes. We're going to close with The Blessing, the song called The Blessing. But I want to pray for you. And I want to, I want to pray for me. Because I convicted myself in this message. And so, Lord, I want to come to you and I just want to ask you, first of all, for me, for myself, personally. God, I've, I've failed you plenty. And I fail you daily, in fact. And I, and I watch people go by me and I don't say anything even when your spirit prods me to say something. And, and that's not to the shame of anyone else. That's just for me to go, God, please help me to realize what you're doing. And Lord, my children are grown, but it's not too late for me to just share with them the importance of who you are too. I pray that they would lean into their, their, what they know and what they learn and what they've heard throughout their life. And I thank you, God, that you created them to be specifically who they are purposefully so that they can reach specific people that you've called them to reach, whoever that is. And the same is true for everyone sitting in this room right now. And the same is true for everyone listening online right now. It's never too late on this side of heaven, the moment we're still breathing, that we can't share our faith and that we can't receive Jesus. It's that moment on the other side that it's too late. And so, Father, I pray for is anyone listening or sitting here today that has not received your son, Jesus, that they would do that today. I pray that your spirit is prodding them, talking to them right now. And they would pray a prayer because their life has already changed. Their heart is already changing. And they would say something simply like this. Dear Jesus, I ask you to come into my life and save me. Jesus, I've turned from my sin and I'm turning to you. Thank you for dying on the cross and raising from the dead. I believe in you. I believe you did that for me. Jesus, save me. And the same prayer is true for those of us who've prayed it a long time ago. We can still pray today, God, lead me in the way. Show me how I should be going. Help me to turn to your word. Help me to realize your word and help me to follow your word and help me to stay true to your word. Thank you for this day. May we go out to the different places that we're going to go today. And would you influence each and every one of us to share our faith with somebody that you tell us to. We love you, God. We praise you. And we thank you for our fathers and our father figures and everyone else like that in our life. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. And we all say, Amen. okay, so we're gonna sing this final song. You guys are free to go anytime you want to while we're singing. It's up to you. You can go. The doors are gonna be there. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I don't know if they're going to hear you. Go ahead. Thank you.
our, our families, that God would bless not just our family and our children, but their children and their children after that.
you grab one, okay? So it's been fantastic day. I hope you guys uh, got something up. I hope God spoke to you, not something from my message. I hope God spoke to you. That's my prayer for you. So I'm going to close this up prayer. I'm going to just pray. But, uh, you know, there's some people on my heart right now. I need to keep praying for me. He's still trying to, she's still trying to heal from this whole thing. She's on the other side of it, but she's still taking treatment. And uh, there's many other people that are just like her that we need to be praying for. And so many people in our town work to, what's the number around 30 something? 32, whatever it is. It doesn't matter. It's a, it's a number that we don't like, we don't want. Uh, and so I'm just going to pray right now that God is good today. Because <laughs> I'm sick of it. I'm really kind of sick of it. I don't know about you guys. Not because of just all the regulations. I'm just sick of people getting sick of it, from it, and people dying from it. And same thing with the flu and all of it. So. Father, I just thank you, God. I know that you are large and in charge. You are the man. And so, uh, because of that, nothing is too big for you. Nothing is too small for you. Nothing is beyond you. And so, Father, the coronavirus, COVID-19, did not take you by surprise. In fact, I think in many ways you used it, God. Maybe to wake us up. Maybe to show us some things about ourselves. Maybe to show us some things about our world. But, God, we also have this horrible stuff going on around us with people treating each other meanly, not because of COVID now, but because of the color of their skin in many ways. And Father, it's not just a black and white issue, it's, it's a people issue. And so we pray for those people around us, we pray for all people, but we pray for those who are being treated unfairly, whatever, however that comes out. And God, we pray that we would be gracious to one another, and no matter which way we fall into this. Because God, you created all races. You created all people. And you would never want any one person to be treated unfairly because of how they look or what they say or what they do as far as their culture or their skin color. And so, Lord, we pray for, uh, we pray that that would be healed. We pray that you heal our land, not just in the United States, but in the world, period. And so, Father, we pray, we pray, we pray. Cover our police officers, cover those out protesting, cover those out staying home protesting, whatever they're doing. But God, we most of all pray that your son Jesus would become real to everyone who hears my voice today and beyond. Father, may we share our faith with others and in sometimes these our ways. Our lives matter. In Jesus' name we pray and we all say amen. amen. Have a good day, guys. I said you can sign I don't know why you wanted to do it at the yeah. end. Thank you.